All right, this is where we had our object, but we're now going to move it to a new location. So I'm now going to set it up between these two critical points, right there. It doesn't matter if it's actually in the middle. What matters is that you go as high as one of my grid lines here. That makes your drawing a lot easier. This one should be fairly straightforward. We know we can go straight into the mirror and then we can exit through the focus like that. So the beam of light that goes in straight will head out through the focus. Then if we take a beam that goes through the focus like that, it should head out straight. And it already looks like we have an intersection. So there seems to be an image forming out here. The scattering light has now reassembled itself down here. Can we do a beam of light that goes from the tip to the mirror while passing through the center? Well, the answer is no, we can't but we can make it on the same direction as if it did come from the center. So if I take this line here, okay, and I pick this color, and I draw a line like this. This trajectory is what's important. It's not that the light actually started in the center, but it's following a path like it came from the center, which guarantees if you're f following a spoke-like path, this is a 90 degree intersection. So even though the light is not in this location at all, so you would draw it as a dotted line. There's no real light there. Light started at the tip, struck, and then it turned around and went right back on itself like this as if it came from the tip, okay? And <clears throat> it heads out here, and we no longer have a clean intersection. We have this big zone of intersection, and that's pretty typical. Why? Because I've got too much mirror in here. This focus does not hold true if you go far too high on the circle. If we had this little object here only one square high, this intersection here would be nice and clean. But if we have too much curve on the mirror, the intersection fails to work out neatly. And that is why when you look into the curved mirror, it's severely curved, it stretches your head and ears. You need to confine your use of the mirror to a very narrow range if the focus is gonna be clean. So I wouldn't hold this against you. What do you pick? You pick the middle of this zone. So it looks like what it's doing now is assembling a colossal replica somewhere out here of the actual object. So we can go in here now and see that it's bigger. The object is far beyond, it's inverted, sorry, salt, attitude is inverted. Its location is far beyond C and it is still very much real and projectable. So we start getting into what I call these trick shots. And if you don't understand how this is working, this beam here, it's as easy as looking at a circle, right? And if I take my center line in a circle, this line from the center must hit the rim at 90 degrees. So if anybody was in the circle and kicked a ball this way, it would bounce straight back from the rim. But what if they didn't start there? What if instead they did this? So I'm choosing a darker color. The guy went out like this instead. He didn't kick the ball starting in the center. Rather, what he did was he walked a few steps closer to the wall. And from here, he kicked straight to the wall. Just because he moved from the center closer to the rim, this direction downwards is still going to hit the wall perpendicular and the ball will come right back at me. 
So it doesn't matter if the beam of light started here and hit, or it started here and went up and hit. In both cases, it strikes the mirror at 90 and comes right back on itself. And this gives you a giant image. And this is the point where if you're sticking your hand towards the mirror, your hand becomes bigger than the real hand and bulges out of the mirror at you.